Hey friends. Okay. You know that phrase, third time's the charm? <laughs> this is the third time I'm attempting this recipe. It was just not my day yesterday. I had a day, so I'm not even showered today. I have no makeup on. I put a little lipstick on because I have like no color lips. All that said, I'm just going for it again because try, try again. Um, even people who know how to cook a little bit, like me, I mean, I don't know a lot, but I do know some things, can just have bad days in the kitchen. <laughs> Anyways, I am teaching you today how to make homemade ricotta cheese. You guys, this truly is a very easy recipe. I just had a few things that I had written down wrong. I've made it before and it's always so easy, it blows my mind and I couldn't find the recipe I used, so I was kind of like looking something up and I just didn't do my fact checking and shame on me. So anyways, I'm gonna teach you how to make it the right way. Super simple, it involves whole milk, a little bit of cream. I've seen some recipes without, so if you didn't have the cream, no worries, just don't use it. But whole milk is super important. A Little bit of salt and an acid, typically lemon juice can be white vinegar. This recipe calls for a little combo of the two, but if you didn't have one, just use the other, it's not that big a deal. The big, big deal with this, which I knew the first round that I had made the mistake is with your milk. So I was at Trader Joe's. But the key, you guys, is to not use ultra pasteurized milk. For you local folk, that involves most organic milks, although Trader Joe's brand organic milk is not ultra pasteurized, um, Dairy Gold, ultra pasteurized, don't use it. That is super important. Apparently when um, milk gets ultra pasteurized, it does something to the milk proteins, rearranges them. I read some of the technical scientific stuff behind it because I really wanted to know, but it basically restructures the protein, making it really difficult for um, the curds to form. And you gotta have curds to make cheese. So um, that was my mistake, but you're not gonna make it because I'm telling you what you need to do. So anyways, you basically heat up your milk um, and you're shooting for around 185 degrees. I'm gonna teach you a couple tricks of things to look for if you don't have a thermometer, but if you do, around 185. And then when you add your lemon juice and vinegar, um, you give it a stir and then you just let it hang out five to 10 minutes and let the curds kind of do their thing and separate from the whey, the W-H-E-Y whey. And um, then you're gonna just put it in a colander with some cheesecloth. If you don't know what cheesecloth is, it looks kind of like baby diapers, like from, you know, the olden days. It's that thin, gauzy stuff. Um, and it's it's sold, I think, in a lot of grocery stores. Hopefully you won't have a hard time finding this, but this is kind of important. It helps really strain the cheese out um, but it's not an expensive thing to have. So anyways, and then from after you make your cheese, you guys, sky's the limit. Um, I'm gonna spread mine on some little fresh Meg baguette, and I'm gonna teach you some really fun little ricotta toasts and toppings, but you can use it obviously any place you would normally buy store-bought ricotta, lasagnas on top of pizzas. You could honestly just use it with a spoon. It's so good, and I will tell you, I am not a ricotta cheese fan store-bought. It's not, I just think it kind of has, eh, it's kind of lackluster. But I'm telling you, you gotta give this a try because it's a whole different, it's a whole different category almost. It's so good when it's freshly done and really you won't believe how easy it is. You're gonna feel super accomplished and like, I made cheese. Plus, if you have kids, this is a really fun kind of science experiment type thing with your kids where you can see what happens when you add the acid to the milk and it separates and then they'll be like mind blown that they've made cheese. So I'm so excited to get started with this one. Let's go. Okie doke. Hi, it's me. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out the camera situation. I don't have anything I can attach my camera to. So this is as good as it's gonna get. Okay, I'm gonna add my entire half gallon. You wanna make sure you have a non-reactive pan. That, for most things, that's like a enameled cast iron or a stainless steel pan would be fine. Um, this is, and a heavy bottom, if you've got it, is really good. So it's a half gallon of milk, a cup of heavy cream, not heavy cream, heavy cream's ultra pasteurized. Just whipping cream is not. At least that's what my store shopping has, has shown me. And then a little bit, kind of a heaping teaspoon, so it's supposed to be a teaspoon and a quarter. I'm being lazy and you're gonna heat this over a medium high heat. Um, this process right here can take anywhere 10 to 15 minutes, depending on you know your 
burner, thickness of your pan. Um, but if, like I said, if you have a thermometer, I've got a digital thermometer. I forgot to get it out ahead of time, but there we go. Um, and it has a little like uh, connection thingy on the back. So I'll stick that in when it starts to kind of get, start get steamy just to see where I'm at. Um, if you don't, things to look for, it's really steaming. You're starting to kind of almost get like a thickness on top and bubbles around the edges. Um, any of those things are really good signs that you're getting close. Milk will go from being really steamy and hot to like bubbling over the pan very quickly. So you don't need to stir it constantly. I'm just kind of making sure that salt's dissolved in there. Um, but occasionally stir it so you don't get a skin on the bottom. Um, and that's basically it. I will check back in when I add my acid portion, the vinegar and lemon juice. Okay, one little cheesecloth pro tip. My cheesecloth comes folded in half like this. And so I've been, it comes in a long strip. So I've been cutting it into like one, two, three, four, five panel like sections or whatever from where it's folded. And then you can actually unfold this to double it up and make it a big square. So I'm laying that in my colander, about four layers um, so that um, this is, well, well, I'm gonna set this in my sink, which is magically clean. Um, and that's what I'm gonna pour um, the uh, liquid, the curds and the whey through, and then it'll separate and we're gonna get cheese not too long after that. All right, the moment of truth, 185, already 186. So I'm gonna turn the heat off. It has a nice kind of thick foaminess to the top. And you can see like my spatula kind of is coated. It's really bubbly around the edge. I'm gonna remove it actually, just kind of go a little bit off, off the heat here. <clears throat> this is my pre-measured lemon juice and vinegar. I'm just gonna slowly pour that in. Oh, sorry, I'm such a bad camera. A person with left and right hand doing something else. I'm gonna give it a quick stir. Oh gosh, already you see the curds forming. It's kind of getting chunky. It looks kind of gross, but you guys, this is what you do with cheese. This is what happens. So I just wanna make sure it's super incorporated. And now I will let this sit for about, take out my thermometer. I'm gonna let this sit for about five to 10 minutes. Um, and it's just gonna even separate even more. And when I show you before I pour it through the uh, colander, you won't believe what it looks like. Okay, it's been about six minutes. And ew, this is where your kids can really get into this. If you decide to do this with your kids, it seems like you would not wanna consume that. But you guys, this is, this is the deal with cheese. So I'm gonna try with one hand. Got my cheesecloth all lined in my strainer. And now I'm going to carefully pour this all in. And now, this is really all about patience and that's about it. Now it's gonna hang out for about, it's the recipe that I, I've done a lot of research, everybody has different things, but it says like eight to 10 minutes for really, really soft ricotta. I'm going for a soft, I don't want it to be too gooey. So we'll check with it and see where it is in about um, eight minutes and I'll let you know. Let's talk toppings. So I had a little roasted red pepper that I sliced up, some Kalamata olives and some fresh um, not oregano, thyme. So that's gonna go on one. And then this has got olive oil, salt, pepper, fresh basil, and I got some balsamic glaze I'm gonna drizzle. And this is some diced peaches with fresh basil, yum. A little honey almond, and then some smoked sea salt flakes with just a little bit of pepper and um, olive oil. So those are gonna be the toppings that I put on my little ricotta toasts, which is so fun. There's just endless possibilities and it's a really fun way to jazz it up. Um, or honestly, like I said, a spoon would be just as delicious in your mouth with ricotta on it, yum. Okay, eight minutes to me, not enough time. Starting to kind of dry out on the edges, but the center still too runny for my liking. Um, honestly, if you look at recipes, it goes anywhere from eight minutes to 30 minutes to an hour. So I really, the longer you leave it, the firmer the cheese is gonna be. So really 
drain it off and then start kind of checking out what it looks like for what you like. I want it to be soft like a whipped cream cheese. So that's what we're going for. I'll let you know what the final time ends up being. Finally, it's at a stage I like. So when I move it, the center is kind of like jello -y, but not. And then look at all that water down there already. And this is, I transferred to this bowl because I wanted to um, clean some things in the sink. But this is about the consistency I want. And you can see I can put my finger through it, but it doesn't like go back on itself. And so transfer this to a bowl and then we're gonna get to decorating our little crostinis. Yum. All right, hey, I'm just decorating my yummy little toasts with ricotta, fresh ricotta. You guys, it turned out so good. Third time was the charm. I just needed to, I needed a reset today and it all is coming together so beautifully. Okay, so last toast. So ricotta, come zoom in real quick. I want you to see how it still is a little bit milky on the edges. That's just the way separating from the curds, but you can stir that right back in to add moisture to this cheese. And this is still warm, it's not cold, um, which is I kind of how I like to eat it like right away. But this can stay in the fridge for four to five days and you can just continue to use it on little toasts. You can do homemade pizzas, you can do stuffed shells. This last one I'm gonna make has a little honey. This is a sweet one. A little honey drizzle and I'm gonna do just a couple almonds. And I'm gonna keep that kind of away from the rest so they don't all get contain can or contaminated for my sweet husband who's also filming. Okay, quick rinse the fingers. So you guys, I mean look how pretty these are. Come take a, come zoom in off of me and get on these really quick. Super fun. And you can just sky's the limit on the toppings. This is again, just one thing you can do with the ricotta. You could literally, I'm gonna do it. It's so good. Mmm, yum. So the cool thing, it just doesn't taste like store-bought. It has a whole different flavor profile. Now you may not like it warm. I do, but you can pop this in the fridge for a couple hours to get it chilled down um, and then use it how you want it or drain it a little longer if you like it a little bit more firm. But which one should I try? I just can't decide. I think I'm gonna go, I was surprised how much I really like the roasted red pepper and the Colada olive with a fresh thyme. Mm. It's all the things, salty, crunchy, tangy, creamy, herby. You guys, you've got to try making this cheese. I know it's the vehicle for all the other things, but still, cheese alone is pretty awesome. Whoa, I think we need to have a party tonight. <laughs> so, so good. And I will put um, in the notes, by the way, how I make my crostinis. Um, it's just baguette cut on the bias, meaning instead of cutting it straight across, I just cut it on an angle and then a little olive oil, that's it. It'll give you my exact notions of how I do it. You gotta give these a try. Homemade ricotta, it's a winner. All right, to light of the bite, subscribe, share, tell your friends. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for interacting. Um, anytime that you share my videos or if you make a comment and then underneath the YouTube video or any of those things, it really, really helps kind of boost it in the cycle. I don't understand how it all works, but I know that interaction is good. So comments and sharing and all those things is awesome. Subscribe, of course, and follow me at Delight of the Bite for Instagram. I do some updates there on different things occasionally. And thank you so much for watching. Happy summer. Happy toasting with ricotta. All right, see you next week.